No, you connect it directly to your system. Okay. To uh, play, right? Yes. So should I hand it over to you? So we welcome those that are here. We take taking a presentation. I can see the book from all walks of life. Yeah, we welcome the book. No, no, just for control. Oh, oh, beautiful. Oh, yes, so oh, I bring that. Uh, bring it. Okay, I'm going to take you to Ah, what? Oh, um, okay. Lose it. Oh, okay. Mr. Mm, from that distance. Oh, okay. Okay. So we welcome one of our employers here, President. Professor Ketinger Mokoye, Council Member. Please go slide show them. This is the of the system. Make sure you know, Thank you. Yeah, make sure. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. This one. I salute you. And of course, it's also a university in our lecture. It is not evening. The immediate pastoral commissioner for education is also here. We salute you. Professor, yes, for men, we welcome you. Oh, what is it in this thing? Yes, this is of the Faculty of Security Science. We salute you. They know about now. And we're not saying where there's not a new thing to show. I said, I didn't know. Good to see you once more. It is not easy. We will be recognizing people accordingly as we make progress. On. Please permit me to come and see the show for television. People that are not well dressed, you know what I mean, well dressed academically, to please sit accordingly. Now, for TV, come on the show. I uh, is for those that are. Check your records, you know. Please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So please, somebody should be directing the board accordingly. Please, if you are the owner of this car, on that car, black in color, RS nine sixty AD. Please, kindly go and park. Then the protocols will do well to collect things. Hmm? Give him five seconds. Yes, yeah. Find that boy. Find that guy. That let him bring that the the lessons. That idea of power PowerPoint. I give. I give him. And of course, the group. The boy went outside. You go see him outside. That are also here. On your camera too, yeah. Professor Wakani, I can see you there. Former the environmental side. Engineering, sorry, I'm talking more why I always place in engineering. Nah, environmental. Not if you like the green things. <laughs> With a little side. What am I No. The wife of the immediate past vice chancellor of this university is also a dear professor Blair and we salute you. We welcome you. In a few minutes' time, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the academic procession will come in. It will march in the colors, it will march in. 
Get up or you I can also see Professor One, two. One, two. Ego, I told you no way You control the video. Bring that back. Now you should go to yeah. I just say give the point. You just it's okay. Just stage now. Okay. Well, first of all, all in fact. Well, I'm correct. See, don't worry, don't we worry. Now, we have to we have Good to hear out 
Also recognize those outside of the Jordan. Welcome and recognize you in your own class. We are all together here. Hello. Whether you are outside of the Jordan or inside, we are all parts of this important group. The fault of his time in the history. Of Namdeasi New University of Ghana. As we all know, the lecture is going to be delivered by our own dear Professor Joseph, a father, a brother, and a man. Yeah. 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 It's going to be the first Jubilee lecture presenter. The university system is known for scholarship. The university system is known for innovations. The university system is known for good things. And now that the Iwe University remains here today. Okay, this one is this one. Even if it's possible. And this that you understand. And the position is there by the vice chancellor himself. Professor Charles is the new best for the new academy of science. Mm -hmm. The vice president of the new academy of science. The oh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you can see the procession marching in. You can also see the Jubilee Lecturer marching in. It is beautiful. It is not easy. The Vice Chancellor 
I'm not there as if you were university, okay? Just say about it. Professor Charles, okay, to go Simone. Oh, Lord, I know. Fellow Academy of Science. And also see. When the say that. Deputy Vice Chancellor marching in. Oh, when the say. Oh, when the say. You can also see the wife of the Jubilee presenter, Professor Jolly Adema. We salute you. You are welcome. When the same Thank you very much, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Please may we take the national anthem. Thank you very much, Shunizik Song. Thank you very much. Please may we be. Yeah, may I call on uh, Professor Gechimo Koye to please lead us 
in the opening prayer. Let us pray. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, a precious Father will just want to say thank you. What a beautiful day you have made for us. That we are alive in the, the land of the living, O oh God, to celebrate your son today, Lord, is of your making. And we return all glory unto you in the name of Jesus. Father, we hand over, O oh God, this public lecture over to you. Wisdom comes from you. Therefore, Lord, we ask that you envelop your servant with your wisdom from on high. Father, that let Thank you very much, uh, dear Professor Nke Chinyere Mokoye, member of the University Council. Thank you very much. Mr. Vice Chancellor and the chairman on today's occasion are uh, on the uh, Professor Charles Okechuku Esimone, fellow Academy of Science, and the sixth substantive vice chancellor of Namde Azikiwe University Oka here present. Please may we appreciate the Vice Chancellor. We thank you and we salute you, sir. On the permission of the chairman on today's occasion, and of course the vice chancellor of our great university, may I quickly recognize a number of people that are here. Though this may not be conclusive, we do that as we do progress. That is to say, we'll take some names so that we don't leave the program so boring. And of course, we know that it's a pure academic program. Therefore, we have to follow pure academic protocol. But permit me, Mr. Vice Chancellor and Chairman, to recognize place in no particular order the Deputy Vice Chancellor of our university, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Professor Joseph Ikechabalo. We welcome you, sir. We know you are around. You came in with a procession. May I also welcome the Provost College of Namda Azikiwe University Professor G. O. Udiigwe. We welcome you, sir. We welcome you. No. We also welcome Professor Obiechina. Professor Obiechina, we welcome you. I say again, no. May I also welcome.
my very, very elder brother, mentor, Emeritus Professor O.O. Mbono. We welcome you. Past CMO, Namda Azikiwe University Teaching Hospital. We salute you, sir. CMD, sorry, CMD. You know, I'm of the social sciences and all these science related. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We welcome you, sir. We also have Professor SNC Anyangu. We welcome you. Wow. Sir, you are welcome. Uh, permit me also to welcome Professor B. O. Mosu, the Dean of Medicine, is also here. Uh, Dean, we welcome you. Professor Jatex, Jatex Obi is also here with us. We welcome you, sir. Uh, Professor Oke Ikeze, former provost, we welcome you. Good to see you, sir. No, sir. Uh, former council member of this great university, we welcome you. Professor Oliver Ezechi is the director of research, Nigerian Institute of Medical Researches, all the way from Lagos. We welcome you. Dr. Messi Anugu. Dr. Anugu is the acting MD, Federal Medical Center, Onisha. I say no. You are welcome. May we welcome the royal entourage all the way from Newi, Neni, sorry, His Royal Majesty, Igwe Demian Ezani, Igwe Ugonabo, na Neni, very fine man, call me, I cannot resist to be a fine man. <laughs> we salute you, sir. We also welcome Chief Sir Edwin. Ezude, we welcome you. We welcome Sir Christian Ikebodo, the President General Newi Town Union. So they have been relating in Newi, that is the problem here. Neni Town Union. So we welcome you, sir. And then Sir Oliver Oyedum, we welcome you. We also welcome the director of Kawindo on America, Professor Ike Odimegu. We welcome you, the CWS director, Professor Dennis Aribodo. We welcome you. So please, protocol, avail me of names so that I don't make unnecessary mistakes. We also welcome the Dean of Basic Clinical Sciences, Professor Igwebike Onyoha. We welcome you. We welcome you. Sorry, we are also trying to get one and the other go other things together so that once we start, we move on without hitches. We also welcome Professor Neka Abakoba, past Deputy Provost, College of Health Sciences, we welcome you. The wife of the former Vice Chancellor of our university, the immediate past for that matter, Professor Glad Ahaneku is also here. We welcome you. Professor K.O. Eze. The immediate past dean of medicine is also here. We welcome you, sir.
May we welcome Dr. E. A. Afia Bigwe. We welcome you, sir. The Chairman of Medical Alumni, UNISIC. We welcome you. Thank you, sir. We also welcome Professor Bwago, former Provost Federal College of Education Technical Lumunze. We welcome you, sir. We also have in our midst, of course, this is a special recognition of the chairman of UNISIC inaugural lecture committee, Professor Richard Uwakwe. Please, a special round of applause for him. We welcome you, sir. We also welcome Professor Emeka Izama. We welcome you, Prof. No, no. Please, we will be taking the recognitions as we move on, but permit me to welcome the university boss, sir. Mr. Gozier Iguato, we welcome you, sir. We welcome you. Please permit me to move the program forward. We'll continue to recognize people accordingly. On this note, Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to invite in a special way, the chairman of UNISIC Inaugural Lecture Committee, Professor Richard Owakwe, to please come forward first to introduce the first Jubilee lecturer just for normal recognition. And of course, his beautiful wife, the smiling wife of the Adima. So please, Professor Wapwe, you come and introduce them. Then after the introduction, you will now formally invite the Vice Chancellor and the Chairman on today's program, Professor Charles Sokechuku Isimone, fellow Academy of Science to come forward to declare the program open, the chairman. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, Professor Joseph Fine Adema is here to present the first UNISIC Jubilee Academic Lecture. The assembly is now properly constituted. May I invite you to come forward and declare the program open? Professor Adema, please. Professor I.B. Adema and Professor H. Adema, kindly come forward. <laughs> Thank 
Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, now that this academics assembly is properly constituted, may I honorably invite you to call this assembly to order. Mr. Vice Chancellor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A vice chancellor Charles says, Simone, carry your stable. A vice chancellor Charles says, Simone, we do for you. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Senate, on behalf of the Council and Congregation of our great university, Namda Zikiwe University, it is my pleasure and singular honor to call this first Jubilee Academic Lecture Assembly to order. It's now open for discussion. Please, another round of applause for our amiable Vice Chancellor. Mr. Vice Chancellor, so all distinguished scholars and guests, may I inform all of us that this program is being streamed live all over the world, and we have participants from all over the world. So it is a hybrid program. And this is what Namda Azikiwe University is known for. And of course, that is why we have moved from 2000 position to 31st position in, that, in the, in the Sub-Saharan Africa. It is not easy. And of course, they fought in Nigeria. All glory to God and great thanks to our amiable and ever resourceful Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Okechuku Esmone. We salute you, sir. Having declared this innovation, innovative program open, and having granted us the grace to move on, it is my honor and privilege, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to invite the chairman on today's occasion and to the glory of God, the sixth substantive vice chancellor of Namde Azikiwe University, Oka, Professor Charles Sokechuku Esimone, to please come for, forward for the Vice Chancellor's opening remarks. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Thank you very much. The Provost College of Health Sciences, the deans in the faculties of health sciences, the heads of departments in that faculty, the deputy provost, the former CMDs, former provosts, and all the medical uh, chants that have gathered today at Namdaziko University. Ibenne, Igwe and your cabinet, the PG, and make it on uh, Today, Bu, a very important day. Uh, we are here to uh, hear his remarks. We are here to hear him out, to support him, and to give glory to God on his behalf. So I thank you, deans and directors of other faculties. I can see my uh, very powerful erudite uh, director of uh, Oka Window in America, uh, director of SciWest, former dean engineering. Thank you. And all the uh, guests who are here, 
Uh, please, the protocol has been well established by God's have already wasted uh, more than enough time. First, I want to welcome every one of us, our great students of UNISIC, of the greatest UNISIC students. Yes, I can see our uh, very wonderful medical students and students from the College of Health Science in general, they are all here. I don't know how you were able to make it here so early from Newe, but I think it shows dedication to the thing that we're going to do today. So I thank you all in a special way. Today is a very a unique day. As you will have heard, this is the first Jubilee academic lecture that Namdezikwe University is uh, organizing. And if we check, because I want somebody to quickly check, I want you to Google and confirm whether there is any other university in Nigeria that has held Jubilee Academic Lecture. If you see it, then uh, please let me know before I, I step down from this podium. I want to let you know that it's on record that Namdazikiwe University is the first, and very soon others will be following. Jubilee Academic Lecture is exclusively for professors who have been professors for the past 25 years, minimum of 25 years, and they are still serving in the university. It's a very tall one. If you have professed, more of us vice chancellors have not professed for 20 years even. <laughs> I was just counting, oh, I've, got the, I've, got the, it's, I'm, I've not reached. So we are all aspiring to profess for 25 years and still be serving in the university. And then you come and tell us what you have been doing for that past 25. It's different from enough or to the community as a professor to the town and the gang. This one is a professor who has been for 25 years and is active in service. He has not expired. He has not retired while in service. And there are some professors who have retired while they're in service. Are they amazing any research? No new publication. Uh, but at this one, is for a professor who has is in the system 25 years, is still very much very active. And I'm very proud, I'm very happy to be associated with the very first ever Jubilee Academic Lecturer in our university. And as I said, check out in the entire Nigeria, Professor Joseph Brian Adema. You are not just an example, you are not just a peseta, but you are an example that is living an example that we are seeing. I want us to appreciate you in a very special way. And you know, we say that uh, beside every successful man, you find a very powerful, a very progressive woman. And I can say of uh, our wife, because uh, you know, Dolly is our wife. I didn't know we crossed seven rivers and seven seas, you know, to bring her. And she has uh, been fulfilling her role very well in every ramification. And that's why Brian is looking younger every day and the brain is still very hot. If you have any discussion with Brian you know, on any topic whatsoever, you'll be amazed about the depth, you know, that this professor can go to. He's, he's a... It shows that the wife is really doing a good work. Yes, both uh, within and outside in official hours. So I thank you very much, uh, Dolly. <laughs> I'm also excited that, you know, we, we got this approval, you know, from Senate. And uh, initially we're thinking that it's going to be, you know, something that we'll, we'll be able to fund that's the university. But I want to put it on record that Professor Adima has set a very wonderful record. Not only, I don't know how he got the funding because by the time we planned this, in San University, then we're going to go, we will lecture, we want to promote academics, but we don't have funding for this. He came to me a couple of times, he told me, Visi, don't worry, that I have trained students. I have mentored so many people. And my mentees have agreed that they will, they will, they will, uh, on this. So what we are seeing today is a product of 
the several mentees, they will still be recognized, they will still be recognized at a, at a different time of this professor. And I tell our colleagues who are here, please leave good legacies so that our children will be proud to be associated with us, even as we are aging in the system. When he told me how these children, how these his, uh, you know, mentees rallied around to plan this and to, you know, everything, every expenses they are, and they are going to do more, which he, he's going to, he has told me in confidence, and they will announce it here. He's a role model for all of us, you know, to emulate. Let the good works that you do so shine amongst men, amongst your students, amongst your peers, amongst your colleagues. So when they see the good work you are doing, they will not only glorify God, but they will also show appreciation to man as they are doing today in the life of Brian Adema. So I want to thank this professor for being a mother that I can point to. I said, please follow him, follow this, uh, follow his footsteps. We can boldly say that this first Jubilee Academic Lecture is going to be a pace setter for all of us, for Nigeria, for even the world. And beyond this, we're expecting that the proceeds, the lessons that we're going to learn from this lecture will be put in practice in our nation. A nation has come to a level where we need help from experts. And I've said it in several fora that even if they don't request for that help, we have come to a point where we'll be offering the help. We're not asking you again whether you need it. We'll tell you that this is, this is what we're contributing. And the intellectual knowledge is a very important contribution that we can all give to our nation, to give to our state, to give to our institution. The nation needs our help. In every sphere where we are, you know, the, uh, the university director was saying is uh, in the social science, is political science. And I'm saying that everybody, Monday, political science, Zagana, Kuzia, Kais, and May politics, the science of politics. Politics have brought Tibo Zobo. Eh? Politics has decorum. And I think that uh, our political scientists can also help us to teach us. Beginning from university politics, university politics now is becoming like APC, a PDP. Very terrible thing. We have not seen that before, but we should contribute. This nation needs help at every strata, at every level. People should know what you know to contribute at every point in time. And what our dear Professor Brian Demar has contributed in his own area in gynecology is very unique, and we appreciate him. So, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished colleagues and our friends and well wishers who have come from different parts, and those who have joined us uh, online as this program is being streamed. I want to assure you that today's first Jubilee Academic Lecture is going to be very exciting. We're going to gain a lot from it. Let us sit back, relax, and make up our minds to take away several messages. We're going to have several take-home messages. On behalf of my wonderful management, on behalf of the Senate and the, the Council, as I've said before, it's my singular pleasure to welcome us all to enjoy our first Jubilee Academic Lecture by Professor Ryan Adima. Thank you very much. A vice chancellor Charles says, Simone, no good can a chupu. Reading for you. Thank you. Please, another round of applause for the vice chancellor and chairman on today's occasion. We welcome you, sir. We salute you, sir. And we celebrate you, sir. Mr. Chairman, can you permit me to recognize Professor Emmanuel Akwezilo of this great university, retired dean of education, is here with us. He has been here with us. So we salute and welcome you, sir. You are welcome. Uh, we also welcome Professor Sam C. Melodo, former dean basic natural medical sciences. We welcome Professor 
Chidum Ezemaka, visiting professor in diaspora from Trinidad and Tobago. We welcome you, sir. Associate Professor T.U. Mberi, Chief Coordinator, uh, all the way from Newi, Unizik, we salute you. We welcome you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we want to take special academic performance by the Department of Theatre Arts of our great university because here we teach and we demonstrate. So let us sit back and watch this great academic performance. Thank you. May I also welcome in a special way, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the immediate past deputy vice chancellor academic for our university, Professor Frederick Odibo, we welcome you, sir. And of course, special advisor to the vice chancellor, we salute you on academic matters. We welcome you, sir. Biko Kuala Niaka, Dalo, sir. Dalo, the performance, please. We may not be all we have feelings. We are like you. Why she us to say no to women, my treatment. No to women, my treatment. No to women, crisis. No to women, crisis. No to mutilation. No to intimidation. We may not be. Oh, we are feelings. We are like you. Why treat us this way? No to women, my treatment. No to women, my treatment. No to women, crisis. No to women, crisis. No to intimidation. No to mutilation. We may not be. Oh, we are feelings. We are like you. Why treat us this way? No to women, my treatment. No to women, my treatment. No to women, crisis. No to women, crisis. No to intimidation. No to mutilation. Women are beings. Oh, we are feelings. We are like you. Why treat us this way? No. To women, my treatments, no to women, no to women, crisis, no to women, crisis, no to intimidation, no to Did you know this no children on the eight children that are left this program? That you have work and you are here, you like the parents of the child. Will you come back to a woman? This is how stupid you are. This is how stupid you are. Yes. You are waiting for me. Before you come home. Before you be my big commitment. If you have wasted you are. 
Unconditional holy again. Well, if they are so hard working enough, you can go to Are you normal? Can you imagine this woman that I married with my money? My hard earned money. She had the guts to tell me to go to the kitchen. A chief like me. A high class man like me to go to the kitchen and serve myself. Woman, don't you think you're mad? And I will slap you again. In fact, to hell with you and that food. I'm not eating again. We may not be, oh, we have feelings. We are like you, oh, why cheat us this way? No to women, my treatment. No to women, my treatment. No to women, crisis. No to women, crisis. No to intimidation. No to mutilation. Women are beings. Oh, we are feelings. We are like you. Why treat us this way? No to women, my treatment. No to women, my treatment. No to women, crisis. No to women, crisis. No to intimidation, no to mutilation. Women are beings. Oh, we are feelings. We are like you. Oh. Why treat us this way? No to women, my treatment. No to women, my treatment. No to women, crisis. No to women, crisis. No to intimidation, no to mutilation. Women are beings. Oh, we are feelings. We are like you. Oh. Why treat us this way? No to women, my treatment. No to women, my treatment. No to women, crisis. No to women, crisis. No to intimidation. No to mutilation. No. Knock, knock, knock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock, knock, knock. Hey! Amanda! Where are you from? Thank you very much. Are you now? I'm trying. Oh, I'm really happy to see you now. 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 You're not coming now. You know you're heavily pregnant. I'm trying to see you now. I am so relieved now. So relieved. So just me now. Where the register for us, Nenka? Ah, you like all the big, big places. Big houses. I don't get that one, Joe. I did ask you something. Where did you register for us, Nenka, now? Eh? Uh, no, there's no house to know. Uh-uh. Is it clinic? It's what? No, my mind is to do. Now. My mind is to do. Do you want that? Mama, you two do want to have one house or well, one room in a house. Mama, it's you two. Oh, God. I don't want to help uh, pregnant women to do the farm. Do you want to help Mama Pega? Hey, 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 hey. Quiet, and you've been saying rubbish since. What do you mean, Mama, you could too? Is she a midwife? No, no, man. Is she a nurse? No, Is she man. a doctor? She is What are you saying? Does she not have the right equipment? So you look at all the good gynecologists in town, good hospitals, good clinics, even midwife to go and register your ancestor with one local woman. Man. You want to kill yourself? That's how your family do it. Don't now. tell me that your family do it. Don't endanger your life. Even the life of your own child. I'm so disappointed. 
Mm-hmm. If I really brainwash you, I'm going to brainwash you. What do you mean you defined? With all your education and everything. I'm obeying, you don't disappoint me. Then what is the problem? No, man. What? Every single conversation. My husband beats me. He has every slight provocation. If he hits you, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay, don't cry. It's not that now. It's in danger. Oh, no, man. Let's not speak. Okay? Ah. Let's pick up your bag. Let me save you. Okay? Oh. Okay. What? He has. Uh-uh. I'm not happy. You. Easy, easy. easy. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy. Mm-hmm. Eh? Hmm? What do you do? Yes. 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 You are happy. Are we are happy. We are We are We We are happy. We are 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 Oh, we are feeling We are like you, bro. Watch it out this way. No to women, much is meant. No to women, much is meant. No to women, crisis. No to women, crisis. No to intimidation. No to mutilation. Yes. It's a game. No, no, no. Bye, bye, bye. Keep away. Now, do you know that is out there? You keep what? You know the answer. Bye, bye. Mama, so you hear that? No, I'm not. 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 No, i am not um, what about my wife? Nothing serious. No, this thing. I don't come make I go carry a meet uh, Mama oh. take her. Make people cut that the way they in between my leg. Eh. Wait, Mama. Let's start. Are you trying to tell me about castration? I did talk. I was trying to talk. Eh? No, 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 too much. Nothing no, 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 no. No, Mama. No, Mama. What did you do? I thought you were just feeling down. I'm very happy, Mama. What did you do? 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 Mama, I know. Mama, I know. Things have changed. Mama, things have changed. Mama, you will get the best of me. Mama, Mama, you're trying to tell me that. What's my wife is? Mama, <laughs> she will be no, no. home. She only me, Mama. Mama, Mama, she will be home. 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 She
Mama, I said, God forbid. Mama wants to know. Mama wants to know. Mama wants to know. Mama wants to know. Mama to Mama wants to know. 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 Mama wants to know
Mama, you have finished me. Mama, you have finished me. Mama, you have killed me. Mama, you killed me. Mama, you killed me. Mama, Mama, you've killed my wife. Mama, you killed my wife. Mama, do you know how many important people are invited for my wife? Believe me, Mama. Mama. Mama, I thought you said this is not harmful. Mama, I thought you said your mother did it. Mama, I thought you said the mother, the mother, your mother did it. Mama, what's this? Mama, you said that she's not going to die. Mama, you've killed my wife. Mama. Mama. Mama, you give birth to another woman now. No, Mama, no. you give birth to my wife. She won't talk to you. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Follow, Mama. Me. follow me. Follow me. Mama, you yeah, have to me. Officer, come. Me. Me. There is two monsters that killed my friend. They killed my friend. Yes, yes, sir. Are you a mama? Don't worry. Sir, I did not do anything. I Please, another round of applause for them. That was a wonderful performance by students of the Department of Theatre Arts, Namda Zikiwe University. I will live when we please may we put our hands together. Thank you. Thank you. We are making progress, distinguished scholars, ladies, and gentlemen. Kindly permit me to welcome Chief Okudele Obimune Ichie AEC Obinyelugo. Akokalia Naneni, we welcome you, sir. We also welcome Professor Ariza Banusi, the ASU Vice Chair. They are present. We welcome you, sir. We welcome you, sir. I also welcome Professor Ken Wogu, former Dean Faculty of Law and former University Orator. Ogam, I salute you. Thank you very much. Mr. Vice Chancellor, and chairman on today's occasion, distinguished scholars, ladies, and gentlemen. We want to get into the business of the day. The first Jubilee academic lecture in the history of universities in the world. It has not been done anywhere. You heard the vice chancellor. You know that we are always the first. We are on 31st today, and before June next year, we'll be the first in Sub-Saharan Africa. Kudos to the Vice Chancellor and his great team, all of us, because I'm involved. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to get into the lecture proper, and that is the reason why we are here, and we are here to be part of this great 
innovation. Professor D. Adima, Brian Adima, is a special one because he is the one kick starting this great innovation. We would like to introduce him formally to bring him to the center of the center of the program. But I'm going to call on somebody that will introduce him very well, a great scholar, great orator, UNISIC 74th inaugural lecturer, and of course, the pioneer professor of uh, neurosurgery of Namde Azikiwe University. He is Professor J.K.C. Emejulu. Prof. Mayunan, come forward for the citation on the Jubilee Lecturer. University orator Professor Ken Wago Sigiti Yipwe Nambu, former deputy university orator, Nifini, Kuka Daba. Mr. Chairman, sir. Our Deputy Vice Chancellors, Provost, Your Royal Majesty, Igwe Eze Ugunabo of Nemi. I can see the bossa. Ukwe Mama Reukusala Remana. Emeritus Professor O Umbonu, Nukumada Kebune Nunane. My colleagues, my dean is here watching me. I can mention him. <laughs> my Provost, my dean. Former deans, former provost, I can see Professor, you know, Ikweze, who is one of my greatest mentors of all times. I feel honored to be called up to read the first citation of UNISIC's pioneer Jubilee academic lecture. Very oh, great honor, Cobb. I mean, if you write the records, Afama Baguna, so because <laughs> and I duly appreciate it. Great Jubilarian, Professor J. B. Adima Igiligebumbume. May I have the honor to kindly request that you rise. I'm obono in Ogola Rechia Quarto, and I'm Kabo Jubili. Now, what can I bago tego? Kabo tell you because yeah, let us prevent any accident or incident. <laughs> yeah, good seat. ICT, can you come online? I'm waiting. Project ID Adima, I welcome you. The citation of uh, this great soul is fairly straight. I mean, the thing is, sometimes the greatest things in life are rather simple. And uh, I keep telling my students and trainees that the ease and the brevity of any academic delivery is inversely proportional to the energy you put in. If you go back and sleep, then you have issues, you know, modeled up program, but if you do it clean, you go straight to the matter, it will be as brief as the mini skirt, covering only the subject matter. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Does this work now? Can you control? Can you control it there for me? You know, this is laser, and I won't let it into anybody's retina. I need help. Control my. Please help. Sorry for the hitches. Oh, fantastic. If I name me, yeah, car events now. Bagote, I'm going to chat to Roger. Roger, I'm going to call Roger. Roger, 
and then make way to an enemy to an other kind of Africa. Or name me, oh, quiet university of the moment. I'm about to number four <laughs> by June next year. <laughs> okay, uh, hey. maybe the battery is weak. To work. Can you control it from there for me? Please go ahead. The man is insisting I should use it. So I can use it. Beautiful. So here we are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with the permission of the chairman, may I have your attention for just a few moments. Professor Adima was born 8 September 1954. So despite being over 28 years as a professor, he is deeply still looking towards the age of 70. So time, you know. The family is illustrious, Sir Samuel and Lady Cecilia Adema, both of blessed memory. Umwa Bani village, then a name, Adishon Igwe Otalebane General. His primary school education is as variegated as his contributions to medical health, productive health, women health, and academics in Nigeria in general. What they call the primary school, called Noele, the foundation of very complicated and vast experiences in the firmament of medical sciences. You can imagine it started in Nasarawa and then moved over to Turupo. Building KB, then on Nisha. And that reflects usually the background of the jubilarian. Usually, parents are itinerant or immigrants, and the kids cannot help but travel along with them. Secondary school was at Sukahe. Then he held his first degree, got his first degree, Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of uh, Surgery from University of Nigeria in Suka. I think most of us can identify with that there. He's a fellow of West African College of Surgeons, International College of Surgeons, Chicago, Illinois, USA, International Society of Surgeons in Basel, Switzerland, Institute of Health Educators of Nigeria, Ifen Kamino Bona, Etobis, where Chuanya, or the qualified Ecclesia, a man, see an obo doctor, obo consultant, no jiro, okay, fast, no one age, a man, cousin. So, Oji, fellowship of the Institute of Health Educators of Nigeria. Institute of Policy Management and Development. And then above all, if you see the beautiful gown he's wearing, donning with his wife, it's not because they are twins or because they are husband and wife. It's because they've attained one of the highest points of medical proficiency in Nigeria. And that is the fellow of the Academy of Medicine. He was appointed lecturer one. 1990, and consultant uh, obstetrician and gynecologist, 1990. And now look at the massive transit from being lecturer one to being promoted professor in 1995, just a space of five years. It tells the story of the academics and intelligence in this gentleman. Later, he was head of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, sub-dean, Clinical Faculty of Medicine, Dean of Faculty of Medicine, Provost College of Health Sciences. He was our provost. Director, Equipment Center for Multidisciplinary Research. Professor Adima really does anything that is not multiple. Director, Center, listen to this title again. Director Center for Health and Allied Legal and Demographic Development Research and Training. Saladra. <laughs> member of the Governing Council, Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka, and a member board, Namdi Azikiwe University Teaching Hospital in Nehu. He has mentored scores of professionals. I was glad that the university orator brought it to bear. And then the vice chancellor actually gave us the details that the university had no money to host this very beautiful and pioneer event. And they did not find anywhere to source the money from. But the mentees of Professor J.I.B. Adima got together and said, sir, for all you have done, for all your kindness, your fatherly roles in our lives, control and mentorship, we will take up this bill on your behalf. And this is why we are here. So thank you, Professor Adima. 
for mentorship. Professor Adimba insists that the masters are the people who hold the master key. And if you want to be a master, you must go down to that master to collect the master key. So he keeps insisting and he keeps manifesting. To date, he has mentored over 10 professors, some of whom are here. Nico, let's appreciate that. He has carried out several appointments. He has authored about 132 research papers in national and international journals. And then in 11 books, not 11 chapters, yeah, in 11 books, he has written chapters on obstetrics and gynecology and allied practices in medical profession. He has attended and presented over 80 conference papers. Nigeria and abroad, several articles are still currently under consideration for publication. His publications are biased. You could see the little and beautiful uh, drama we watched here. It's all about the life of, you know, women. And we got what Iju Wawan. Just yesterday at the Faculty of Medicine, we had a faculty lecture, and uh, luckily. Professor Oliver Zechi, who delivered it from Lagos, is here. And he was trying to emphasize this same issue of the travels of our women, Igbo land and Nigeria in general, where they are meant to be seen and not to be heard, to be exploited and not to be compensated, to be intimidated and not to be encouraged. And I think all the publications of Professor Adima have skewed in that direction all these years. Now, he has done groundbreaking works. Look at Adima procedure. Adima procedure is development of an innovative method for retightening of the loose circulate stitch for managing soil incompetence. Maybe I can, I'm not the inaugural lecturer, but to give you a little guide, we have the gates of the womb is the cervix. The womb where baby grows, the gate is the cervix. And occasionally from natural and human factors, that cervix can become very loose. What it means is that each time a baby gets there and gets heavy enough, like from four, five, six, it drops off. And you can see these women having, you know, regular or routine miscarriages. And they will be subjected to this kind of treatment because the, the task or the onus of procreation is always handed over. The whole box stops at the desk of the wife forgetting that other factors may be at play. Professor Adima had defined a procedure to tighten that gate that is open and lock it. When the baby is nine months, he will go and unlock the gate and the baby will come out. He developed the Dovare postgraduate medical training model, an alternative sustainable training pathway for obstetrics and gynecological specialists in West Africa. Professor Adima established this center, Chaladrat, in Namdiazikiwe University. And he has received university senate approval for commencement of certificate training programs in family planning for sustainable development, sex, sexual and reproductive health, or impact of change and health communications on Africa. Now, he was commissioner of health under the time of Dr. Chris Mwabwezengige. On what is this that you must put Mwabweze? Otherwise, the document is fake. I don't know whether you remember the story. It should be Chris. Once he removes that, then that document is fake. So under him, 2003, 2006, the experiences of Professor Adema were very deep. Uh, I hope he will give us a little insight into his political experience because they see, the VC is worried about the politics we play. If we ask the jubilarian, he will tell you that these politics have been rooted even 20 years back. His own experiences before he left government we are quite instructive. He established the Anambra Healthcare Financing Scheme. You know, today we are talking about Asia. He established a scheme where there will be free maternal and child healthcare to the people of Anambra State. Today, such scheme is operational in Delta State. And I heard that at times our own people go there and they chase them back to go and enjoy our own. He established the School of Basic Midwifery at Mpo implemented the statute established the Anambra State College of Health Technology with six departments. He became the chairman of the governing board. He has facilitated the development 
two executive legal bills. Look at these two bills. They marked a change in so many things. Women's reproductive rights law and malpractices against widows and widowers. You know how when somebody's spouse dies, sometimes you go through a process of ablution to prove that you are not the murderer or you are not the killer. He executed CEDA, Canadian International Development Agency grants on emergency obstetrics care. And he was the Nigerian focal point man on the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, sponsored by FIGO. FIGO is International Federation of Gynecologists and Obstetricians, and Women's Sexual Reproductive Rights Project. Rosa Adima has collaborations with FIGO. He was the 16th president of SOGON. SOGON is the biggest association of obstetrics and gynecologists in Nigeria. It's called Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology of Nigeria. If, I, if you have not heard of it, or if you are not in it, or if you are not prominent, you probably need to think again. Because, and then he has risen to become the president, 16th president of SOGON. Please, uh, can we clap? Can we, can we, can we appreciate it? <laughs> now, in SOGON, of course, being an innovator, he brought several changes, a lot of them. He restructured their management style. He called it geo-administrative machinery. I know what that means. You make it possible that there's equity. Positions should be assumed by competence, not by ethnic origin or by geographical location. So all these things we are fighting for today in democracy, Professor Adima had already instituted it in Sogam. And he didn't stop there. He was the co-chair to the Ministerial Task Force on Accelerated Reduction of Maternal Mortality. Nigeria has one of the highest risks in the world that each time a woman is pregnant, she will die. Each man, so they, we have some of the highest rates and he has played a huge role in that. Now he mobilized obstetricians in Nigeria, including some of the people here, for the first time to erect a national secretariat for Sogon at Abuja, Nigeria. So he built their secretariat and then that is a great one to him. A lot of other collaborations, IPAS, MSI, United Nations Fund, you know, and uh, then BFID, Planned Parenthood Federation, and um, PACNET. PACNET is important to know about because it's a non-governmental organization essentially working to promote women's sexual and reproductive health and rights. Together with youth development, making use of four thematic areas, service training advocacy. Most times we bump into young women who have run into problems of marriage, miscarriage, abortion, which will affect their capacity to be fertile all the days of their lives. He now has a, an agency that in intervenes, gets to these young women, rehabilitates them, restores their confidence, restores their social life, and restores their reproductivity and their fertility. Please, let's appreciate In fact, if you, if, uh, I think if some people who are against the uh, proliferation of population of Africans, as you can read, some true vaccines, some, if they catch Professor Adema, probably they will not, he will not be their best friend. <laughs> He has done so much to enhance you know, reproduction and fertility. Awards. Quickly. Professor Adima was awarded International Who's Who of Contemporary Achievement, 50th edition. International Man of the Year, 1997-98. Who's Who in the World, 16th edition. Man of the Year, 1998. Outstanding People of 20th Century. International Who's Who of Intellectuals. Who's who in Nigeria? Commendation work for devotion to duty life patron, medical student research group, Mesrage. Patron, you see, he just doesn't take care of academics alone. Just the way his wife takes care of him, he takes care of his family and constituents. <laughs> patron of All Saints Church Choir at Mpoago, Merit Award winner 2000 for Rotary Club College of Health Sciences, Award of Excellence by University of Nigeria Medical Alumni Association organization. Uh, Justice of Peace, 2001, Award of Excellence, Best Student Builder of the Year 20 and 2002, Award of Excellence, 2003, Merit Award, Distinguished Service Award, Award of Distinguished Services, Lifetime Achievement Award, Distinguished Favorite Lecturer. There's one I loved so much. It was the first Distinguished Guest Speaker Award uh, in 2014 of the first Emeritus Professor, first of one called Lecture Series. Professor Wanko was our first vice chancellor in this university. 
Traditionally, which I'm sure Igwe is looking out to here, Professor Dima holds a chain, a battery of titles, each of which is as impacting as they sound to the ear. Prof, uh, I think Dr. Afia Igwe is here. When people's tympanic membranes have problems, please stand up and help. Number one, Igirigina Yondo of Medizik. <laughs> Igirigudo of Amichi. So he now extends beyond Newi, Oka, Neni, and gets to Amichi. And he didn't stop there. He was called Obata Odelo in Abagama. I'm sure we all know the meanings of these. Diku, one of Okwamporo in Abia State. Ezani, Igiligi Mota of Neni. Ezani, Igiligi Udona Newi. Ezani, if I chukuna. Ezani, Igiligi Bumbume na Neni. Very importantly, as I close up, Professor Adima is married to Professor Dolly Echendu Adima. Iyom Ugodiebube, a professor of community medicine. And she's here. And in a or the corner can you run? Oh, God, if you see, oh, they can at all. But in between the us, they are available. <laughs> in between them, we have five lovely children, all achieving and prolific Dr. Zikora, Dr. Neoma, Mr. Munachiso, Barista, Luta Feichi, and Mr. None is in an English name. No, Kaiba does here to the grandchildren. As young as they look, seven grandchildren in between. Zonachi, Konaka, Konaka, and all the rest. Zigosichi, Zigosichi, Erima, Chimdindo, Ziora, Yarelum. And so also four years allowed for you, Fred Brian Ifenna. Kind of like father, like son. <laughs> Not forgetting his amiable sons in law, Dr. Fred John and Barista Obieze, and daughter in law, Chini. I got my references from the Guinness Book of Something, something. Don't hold me responsible. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, great jubilarian, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me formally call up the very first and pioneer Jubilee academic lecturer of our university, Namdaziko University of Oka, the University of All Times, Professor Joseph Ifani Brian D. Adema Igligezan, to come and deliver his Jubilee lecture. <laughs> beginning to feel my head growing bigger and bigger. What we call acquired hydrocephalus in medicine. Uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor and Chairman of this occasion, members of the University Governing Council, Senate, and indeed the academic and non-academic community of this university. Igwe Neni, my Igwe Revered Highness, Hurwaya Highness, Igwe Ugunapo. Ezan, Oni, Chifezude, Ije, Akaria, these are my colleagues in the traditional realm of Neni. Let me stand on existing protocol, but not without recognizing all the distinguished academics that have come to grace this occasion. 
including my deputy vice chancellors, including the provost of the College of Health Sciences and his deputy, including the Dean of Medicine, including the Dean of Health Sciences, and all the deans, the academic deans that are here, heads of department, distinguished colleagues, members of PACNET Women's Health and Youth Development Initiative. Great Zikites. Yes. Without the students, we will not be here. And so we are here because of them. I'll also recognize members of my family. My twin brother, Ima, is here. Barista Ima Adema is here. He's my twin brother. I want to recognize also one of my son-in-law and the wife. My daughter is here, Dr. Fred John, coming all the way from Lagos. I want to recognize Professor Ezechi. Professor Elive Ezechi gave the faculty lecture for us yesterday at the Faculty of Medicine. Incidentally, Professor Oliver Zechi was my house officer. I would want to recognize, last but certainly not the least, my very dear wife, Professor Echendu Dolly Adima. Iyom Ugo Diebube. Members of PACNET, Women's Health and Youth Development Initiative. PACNET, saving lives. Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to kickstart this lecture not without, first of all, thanking the almighty God for making me have the privilege of being the synergy of all eyes on this August occasion of the maiden Jubilee Academic Lecture of Namdia Zikiwe University, the first of its kind in Nigeria. The first of its kind all over the world. I don't need to bedevil the point, but it has to be said. You know, the lizard that falls from a height looks in opposite direction and not acknowledging cheers from anybody, not its head in self-praise at the feet it has attained under our present meteoric speed. And it is still moving. We are blazing the trail and we continue to blaze the trail. This is the beginning. But the beginning of things to come, things that are good. Let me thank uh, Professor J.K. C. M. Julu for rendering my citation. He has an eloquent command of the English uh, language. And whenever he has the privilege to let all of us see it. We all see it and we acclaim him. He's a wonderful orator. Professor JKC. So I am going to speak today on a topic that is after my heart. I'm talking on, of, on writing women's sexual and reproductive health wrongs. Stepping the stairs or stirring the steps. It is a very important subject matter because whether we like it or not, women are like spices onto the world, onto the earth. A world without women is like soup without salt.
the woman remains the most enigmatic of God's creation. The woman can make up. She has led to the rise and fall of nations. She has led to the build up and collapse of enterprises. The woman has led to the boom and doom of families. Oh, yes. Talking about the woman, one young man came for an interview. And the interview panel, a member of the interview panel asked him a question. Are you married? You know his answer? He answered, sometimes. And they wanted to know, why did you say sometimes? Then he said, you know, sometimes. I said sometimes because sometimes marriage can be in such a way that it shifts you into the realm of mental anarchy and confusion. And you have to uh, sometimes behave as if you are not married to remain afloat the confines of sanity. If we go to the Bible and talk about women, can we talk about Eve? Our mother Eve, who gave Adam the apple and he ate the apple and all of us began, began to sin. Or do you want to talk about uh, 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 Deborah, the great prophetess of God? Or is it, uh, 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 we talk about uh, the mistress of Samson, Delilah, who pulled down the great strong man and rendered him to nothing? Or do you want to talk about Jezebel, the wicked queen of Ahab, and what she had to go through with Elijah? Or do we want to talk about Queen Esther, the beautiful queen that saved her people because of her beauty? Or do we want to talk about uh, 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 um, the Queen of Sheba, who swept off Solomon and got a baby for him? Uh huh. Or do we want to talk about Mary, the mother of Christ? the queen of the world, that is woman for you. We can even move out of the Bible and talk about Cleopatra, the great Ptolemy queen of ancient Egypt, who single-handedly handled two great Roman generals, the indomitable Julius Caesar and his friend Marcus Antony, to whom even before 28 years of age, she had controlled two of them and gave Marcus Anthony a set of twins, hoping that her blood will take over the Roman Empire. It never worked. But that is the woman for you. We can come nearer home. We can't forget Margaret Thatcher, the first female president, prime minister of United Kingdom known as the origin of Thatcherism, and of course, her exploits at the Falkland Wars, then coming down here to Nigeria, Queen Moremi, the mother of the Yorubas, or do you want to talk about Queen Amina, the vicious Alza queen of Zazao, whose territorial conquests Ranged, ranged from far away Zaria to Ida in Kogi State. There is so much to be talked about the woman. But I want to summarize what I have to say about the woman by rendering the poem that was delivered by President Seda Senghor, the first president of the Republic of Senegal. And this uh, poem, which is landmark, was written in French, but has English interpretation. He projected his perception of the black woman. And that is why the poem was titled, Black Woman, Naked Woman, Femme Nou, Femme Noir. Well, 
It is written in French and in English. I'm going to read it in French. Femme nous, femme noire. Vêtue de ta couleur qui est la vie, de ta forme qui est beauté. J'ai grandi à ton ombre. Le dosso de tes mains abondait mes yeux. Et voilà, quoi, de l'été et de midi, je te découvre. And there, in the heart of summer and midi, I discover you. Terre promise to do haut dans haut col calciné. Et ta beauté me foudroie de plein quoi, comme l'éclair d'un aigle. And your beauty thunders my heart like the lightning of the eagle. Femme nu, femme noire. Naked woman, black woman. Je chante ta beauté qui passe. I sing your passing beauty. Form que je fixe dans l'éternel. Form which I fix in the Lord. Avant que le destin jaloux ne te release pas en cendre. Before the jealous destiny burns you to ashes. Pour nourrir les racines de la vie. To nourish the roots of life. So, ladies and gentlemen, tell me why I should not specialize in women's health. Having this profound knowledge of what woman and womanhood is all about. And so, <laughs> I am telling them, I will keep telling them. And let me talk a bit about myself. It was in 1976. I was a first year clinical student at the time at the main hall of Enugu campus of University of Nigeria, I attended a symposium. In that symposium, which I cannot totally remember the name, the title of that symposium, but there were two eminent speakers that caught my fancy. The first of them was Professor Wilson Onuibo. He's a Glaswegian professor of pathology. And he spoke so beautifully that there and then, in 1976, I decided I was going to be an academic. Later, the next speaker after him was uh, Professor Chukudebelu. They were not professors at the time, mind you. And Professor Chukudebelu, an obstetrician and gynecologist, spoke on something related to abortion. I cannot totally pinpoint that, but there was a quotation he made at that presentation that never left my brain up till this moment. Professor Chukudeva stated, and I quote, that as long as there is man and woman on earth, there must be sex. And as long as there is sex, some of them must result in a pregnancy, in pregnancy. And as long as pregnancies occur, some of them must be unwanted. And as long as some of them are unwanted, some of them must be made to abort. And as long as uh, uh, abortion occurs, some of them must be performed under unsafe circumstances. And as long as unsafe abortion occurs, some of them must end in complications. And as long as complications occur, some of them must end in death. Now you can see what has started as a pleasurable event is now ending as a tragic event of death. That is the tragedy of womanhood a tragedy that is unsalutary, a tragedy that is not wanted, a tragedy that nonetheless is manifesting every day in this, our country, Nigeria, in Sub-Saharan Africa. That is the tragedy of being a woman. It is not proper that any woman should suffer death simply because she's trying to raise a baby for us. No, it is unthinkable. But Nigeria that we are in here has one of the highest maternal mortality ratios in the world, as we are going to see later. Every day, almost every day, in hospitals around us, one woman is dying because of pregnancy and childbirth. Look at what has been acted by the um, actors from theater arts department. That is exactly what happens on a day-to-day -day basis in this country. Anyway. I finished my medical studies. 
But I went for youth service. I worked with the Navy. The Navy people liked me so much because I used to prescribe drugs for them. They asked for drugs that will make them strong. I hope you know what I mean by making them strong. You don't know what making them strong. Well, go, when you grow up, you will know what I say. So the drugs that made them strong. And so when I was about to finish my youth service, the commander asked somebody to send a form for me so I can complete, so that I can join the Navy. That was in 1981. I got the form. I did not complete it because I was still trying to become an academic and a gynecologist. So as soon as there was advert for residency training, Postgraduate training at University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital. I left. I came for the interview. One of the most memorable interviews I've ever had. Frightening, but memorable. You will not understand what happened. You, know, you see, even for my, my referees, Professor Mbono here was one of my referees to that residency training. But I never really told him what happened when I came for that interview. They, they had nine positions for 46 of us who had applied. 46 of us had applied and they had nine positions. And out of that nine positions, four people already had primaries. That means their employment was automatic. I didn't have primaries at the time. So in effect, we were contesting for five positions. So we stood outside, people will go in, and as they are coming on, coming out, they will hold a straight face. And you wonder what is happening inside that room. People will go for interview. As they were coming out, they look devastated and shattered. Say, ha, ah, today is today. Then it was my turn. I went in. The chairman of that interview panel was one professor. Udeku, Fabian Udeku, the giant, the teacher of teachers, those of us who are in medical cycle will know who led Professor Fabian Udeku. Fabian Udeku was even Professor Wankor's boss. So when I walked in, of course, I knew I was sweating through every, every hole in my body. Professor Udeku looked at me from head to toe with a very tight face. He never uttered a word. Even when I greeted, he didn't even respond. I said in my hand, in my heart, well, God, I did for your hand. So, he just bellowed, obstetrics and gynecology. I said, yes, sir. I said, okay. HOD, ops and gyne. Oh, yeah. Grill him. Hey, I said, grill again. I was with, the HOD of Sangani looked at me, had a smile, this cynical smile that he passed on. And then turned and was looking down at his file. He didn't say anything. Then Professor Deku came up again. HOD, what are you waiting for? Grill him. Then Professor the, Dr. Nweke was HOD. Raised his head, turned around, and looked at everybody, said, No questions for him. He said, Ah, no question for everybody. Said, there was, he just allowed them. When they know said, I said, No question for him because he was my house officer. That was the beginning and the end of my interview into residency training. Then Professor Reko said, What are you still waiting for? Go now, the interview is over. I didn't even know when I found myself out of the hall. And everybody crowded. How was it? What did, I said, I don't know how it was. I said, what do you mean you don't know? What were you asked? I wasn't asked anything. They could not decode anyway. I just went and sat down somewhere, waiting for a bottle of cook to cool down. Incidentally, when the result was released, I was one of the people taken. And now I now know that God actually wants me to be an academic and to study obstetrics and gynecology. And that I did 
from 1981, 1986, I qualified. Again, after the exam, full of energy and full of high spirit, I thought they would appoint me immediately at UNTH. I presented my results to them. The next day, I received a letter from the registrar. Congratulations for passing, but incidentally, we don't have vacancy for you. There's embargo on appointment of uh, consultants. So you go and uh, look for jobs somewhere. Good luck. Huh? I said, is it so? I started going to look for jobs. Worked at Our Lady of Lodz in Ihiala. Worked at Iyenu Hospital. Before a friend told you that uh, Unizik is coming up. Oh. It's not, it wasn't Unizik then, Asutek, Anambra State University of Technology. So in 1990, I was appointed lecturer one at Anambra State University of Technology. Again, it was very interesting coming into the university system. I never ceased to forget about what the dean then used to tell us. He would call us to a meeting that was Professor Simon Asogwa. Every meeting ended in publish or perish. Say, I say, ha, perish again. When I was in the university, I used to hear repent or perish. This time around, publish or perish. And what kind of life is this? By 1992, we had become Namdi Azikiwe University. And Professor Mwako was appointed the first vice chancellor. I went to greet him because he was a great teacher, very great teacher that we admired. All of us wanted to be like him. So when I came to his office, he said, ah, young man, you're here. He used to call me the Navy. Oh, the Navy, you're here because I used to dress immaculate white and white with white shoes, white tie, everything white. <laughs> so he used to call me the Navy. So Navy, sit down. I sat down. He said, let me advise you, my son. Now you are here. You must mean business. See everything around you as a publishable material and start publishing. I say, oh, Professor Asogwa said publish or perish. Now, Mwako is saying everything around me is a publishable material. I did not have senior people in obstetrics and gynecology that I could write and give to to read. But I found very, very interesting and very useful to me, the same emeritus professor, O.O. Mbono, who is sitting here. I will write and give him, he will correct, and I send, they'll publish. Each time I write, I give him, he'll correct, I'll send, they'll publish. Then one day he told me, I think you've come of age. You may not need to be bringing your write-ups for me anymore because you write very well. That is coming from Professor Mbono. It was not very surprising to me that by 1995, I became a professor. Between 1990 and 1995, I was a professor. Although it was announced in 1998. But before then, I had held positions as head of department, as the acting dean of faculty, and then by 1998, when I was now be made a, uh, announced as a professor, I became the provost of the college. I was moving. I was a member of the governing council of the university. Um, now, one thing that is certain is when one is appointed a professor, you begin to have this feeling that you have arrived. Everything about you, around you, is small. You're like somebody who has taken cocaine, a shot of cocaine. And what betide anybody who does not recognize that you're a professor and call you a doctor, so so and so? You may take offense. That is the feeling that goes with being appointed a professor. Very so often, people don't ask, what next? You know, there was this music by the OJs in the 70s. They say, now that we have found love, what are we going to do with it? Now that we found love, what are we going to do with it? Now that you've been made a professor, what next? Being made a professor offers you with two options. One, you may traject in a positive way. That is to say, you traject in a particular direction. 
what I call vectorial trajectory. Vectorial trajectory. You know, in physics, you know, you know what we call vector, vector quantity. Vector quantity has magnitude and direction. So if you are trajecting vectorally, you have magnitude and direction. Otherwise, you could be trajecting scalarly. Scalar quantity has magnitude but no direction. Too many a professors have magnitude but no direction. And instead of improving on their being professors, they begin to perish. There are professors that begin to perish until they retire. That should not be the faith of anybody who has attained professorship. You don't stop publishing because you become a, a professor. Publishing should be an art. It should be a passion. Professor Medjulu mentioned it. Look for the masters who have the key. They will give you the key and you open to branchmanship. Look at this our vice chancellor here, a very young man, but he is a man that has made money from grantsmanship and he's ready to mentor a lot of people. Even today, even as a vice chancellor, he's still writing grants. And he's been people in pharmacy are winning a lot of grants in this university. In fact, sometimes our people begin to, to envy, they want to go to pharmacy. You don't need to go to pharmacy. The truth is that he has the key. And some people had gone to him, gotten the key, opened and are tapping from the milk of his knowledge. That is what should be happening everywhere, not just in medicine, every department. There are some people who have the key and they're waiting for you to come. But very too often, you're beckoning on people to come and they're running away. They think you're disturbing them. Anyway, it was in the year 2000 that I made the first hit. I got the grants from David and Lucille Packard Foundation through FIGO to carry out this women's sexual and productive rights project, which is the area I dwelt on over these past 28 years that I've been a professor. Now, the women's sexual and reproductive rights was carried out by six countries, including Nigeria, Ethiopia, Mexico, India, Pakistan. Six countries carried out this, this project between 2001 and 2003. We eventually developed FIGO Professional Ethical Responsibility Guidelines on Women's Sexual and Reproductive Rights, which we presented in Santiago, Chile, at the 17th World Congress of Obstetrics and Gynecology in the year 20, uh, 70, 20, uh, 2003, sorry, 2003. I happened to be the focal point man for the Nigerian project. And what was interesting and made me happy is Nigeria came first, finished first in that project for which we are giving letter of commendation. The letter of commendation was given to us by one Professor Mahmoud Fatala, unarguably regarded as the father of reproductive health. Anybody who is into reproductive health will know that Professor Mahmoud Fatala was the one that coined the definition and is regarded as the father of reproductive health. So let me now go into my presentation. The aim of the presentation I'm going to make is to focus on reproductive health, women's sexual and reproductive rights, and their components. I will highlight areas of sexual and reproductive rights abuses of women in Nigeria, and then talk a little bit of my interventional efforts within these 25 years, 28 years, towards remedying them. What is reproductive health? Reproductive health is defined within the context of the positive definition of health as enshrined in the constitution of the World Health Organization as a complete set of physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity of 
the reproductive tracts, systems, and processes. Now, this is the standard definition of reproductive health, but reproductive health adopts what we call a holistic approach to the management of reproductive ill health, whereby any opportunity seized to talk about reproductive is used to seek information into other reproductive ill health and treat them totally, totally, in totality. Reproductive health is also all about the people. It's not just that simple definition that we gave in the beginning. It's all about the people. Talk about man, woman, boy, girl, uh, Christian, Muslim, everybody, starting from the individual, through the family, through the society, and through the nation at large. Reproductive health is crucial and impacts on certain areas of contemporary global importance. You talk about general health, you talk about development, you talk about economy, you talk about uh, environment and the status of women. Reproductive health is one clear issue that tracks an individual from the womb through to infancy, through to childhood, through to adolescence, through to reproducing age, and through to menopause or andropause, as the case may be. And this is why it is said to follow in the individual from the womb to the tomb or from the cradle to the grave. And by so doing, it can be said to be a measure of the physical, social, and mental well being of a future generation. Now, reproductive health is the foremost component of general health is the most important component of general health and it's also a measure of the socio-economic development of any nation if you want to know how a nation has performed ask questions about its reproductive health indices it equates to human development index now i had tried to compare two countries nigeria and singapore I compared reproductive health for Nigeria and Singapore, and also compared human development index for Nigeria and Singapore. Human development index is measured using three parameters. One is life expectancy at birth. The other is literacy rate or literacy status of the country. The other is the GDP per capita income of that country. Now, if you look at the reproductive health indices for Nigeria, look at maternal mortality ratio, 512 per 100,000 live births, that of Singapore is only eight. Look at infant mortality rate. Nigeria is 74 per thousand births. Singapore is only two per thousand births. Look at uh, another parameter like uh, HIV zero prevalence rate. For Nigeria is 1.4%. For Singapore is 0.02%. Now look at the corresponding human development indices. For Nigeria, let us take the life expectancy at birth, 55 years. That is to say, any Nigerian born today is expected to live for 55 years only, bearing any accidental injury. 55 years. That is what somebody born today in Nigeria is expected to live. That of a person born in Singapore is 83.5 years. Now look at the literacy status. For Nigeria, 62%. For Singapore, 97% literacy rate. Look at the GDP per capita income. For Nigeria, 5,186 United States dollar. For Singapore, 98,246 United States dollar. So you see, the reproductive health indices have equated, equated to the human development index. And that is why we should be able to get it right in terms of our reproductive health index, index indices. Now, what are the components of reproductive health? What are the things that constitute consist reproductive health? There are 12 components that are there in the board. I'm not going to read them out for want of time. But you find that most of the things that are done in obstetrics and gynecology are in one way or the other related to reproductive health. 
Now, the burden of reproductive health is more marked in women and young persons. And that is why any measures that are going to be taken in that direction must focus on women and young people. That will come to women's sexual and reproductive rights. It was at the International Conference on Population and Development in 1994 that a rights-based approach was adopted as a universal policy consensus as to what should be the relationship between reproductive health and development. The rights of the individual became recognized as a single unit of development. It represented what I call a paradigm shift in emphasis within the context of global population dynamics from family planning and demography to human rights. So if you want to get it's right with the development of every of this Nigeria. It 